It's Matt Hofeld of CrimsonCrimmachine.com, along with Sooner head coach Long Kruger. Coach, again, uh, thank you for just taking a few minutes to spend with me this morning to talk a little bit about Oklahoma basketball. Um, I, but I, I want to start out before we get into this year's team, just kind of letting you highlight the Legends event you guys did a couple of weeks ago. That was a fun event, and how exciting was it for you as a guy who's uh, – you're still fairly new to this program to be around some of those uh, old Sooner Legends. Thanks, Matt. It was uh, great to be around those guys. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of tradition with Oklahoma basketball and and uh, highlighting uh, through this reunion the, the 88 uh, National Championship game team uh, of Coach Tubbs. Uh, and, uh, large numbers back, over 100 in total, uh, former players, managers, uh, uh, people associated with the program. It was a great weekend and uh, seemed all had a good time. Apparently, you've got a guy in your uh, in your strength and conditioning coach, Yo-Yo, there, who's uh, still pretty uh, pretty athletic and uh, still can uh, grab some rebounds, right? He certainly can. He uh, uh, talks to our guys all the time about the need to to play with passion and to work hard, and uh, you know, no one exhibits uh, that more for the Sooners than Yo-Yo. Of course, he proved that in in that game as well. You uh, talk about your team coach, and you were able to work out with him over the summer. What are some things, uh, some areas of improvement that you saw from these guys, uh, from the the way things ended in the spring to what you saw this summer? Most importantly, the guys have uh, more experience. They understand more clearly what they have to do to have a chance to win some ball games that we didn't quite get in the right column last year. They've worked very, very hard. The leadership of the five seniors has been great. Uh, Ahmad Imbai uh, coming eligible this year as a junior. Uh, a lot of experience there. He knows what it takes to to win ball games. So uh, the the leadership, the effort uh, in the off season program, the two hours that we were able to be with them on the floor in the summertime was very helpful, and they've carried that over into the fall. Now, one of the things that they did recently was uh, they did a workout with the Navy SEALs. Were you able to be a part of that? And can you talk through can, what they did there? That was a great experience for them. Uh, I was actually here one day, and the other day I was on the road recruiting, but. Uh, just to, to see how um, uh, one of the elite team uh, organizations in the country uh, go about their business and the, and the fact about uh, that it is all about team and it's not about self, it's not about anything individual, it's, it's all about team and, uh, and that point was driven home many times during those workouts. Okay, you are um, you have been the champion uh, through your first year at head of, at, as the head coach at Oklahoma. You've been the champion of connecting yourself and this program to the fans. I, I've never been around a, a coach in, on, in any sport at a collegiate level who takes the time for the fans as much as you do and really tries to connect to them. Talk about your passion for Oklahoma basketball, but the fans as well, and what is your drive to do that? Because it's something that I, I, fans that I talk to that have met you, uh, people who've been to the games, who have seen you shake their, you know, shake their hand as they come in the door of the arena, that, that's not, I mean, that's not common for, for, again, for any level of collegiate athletics, but it's something that makes you special and really endears fans to this program. Can you talk real fast about your drive and your motivation behind that? Matt, at, at the heart of everything is, is uh, the simple fact that this is everyone's program. Uh, this is not my program. This is not the coach's program or even the players, but so many people have uh, invested in the tradition of Oklahoma basketball, from the former players, former administrators, coaches, fans, season ticket holders, uh, everyone uh, has a part in this uh, program, and we need everyone to help uh, get this program where it uh, belongs. And, and certainly, you know, other teams at the University of Oklahoma win championships, and they go about their business in a championship manner, and uh, we want to do that too. And our players understand that, and hopefully the fans feel uh, uh, an ownership in, uh, in what's going on here and uh, want to be a part of it. One of the things that you're doing uh, this year that I'm really excited about is you're moving a couple of games into the field house and uh, give uh, the fans a little more of an intimate atmosphere, um, just a, a change of setting. I know the fan base is pretty excited about that. Is the team excited about that move as well? Very much so. Uh, they uh, understand the tradition of the field house, and uh, it's a little bit something different as well. When you do something outside of the norm, uh, everyone gets a little excited about that. Uh, Place only uh, seats around 3,000, uh, so the uh, the urgency for tickets will be great. Uh, the number of students that will be there will be great. It'll be a great atmosphere, and guys are looking forward to that. We we spent a lot of time over the summer talking West Virginia and TCU in terms of what their addition to the Big 12 means for the football program. But uh, for you as the basketball coach, you've got to travel to Morgantown. Bob Huggins comes back in uh, to the Big 12 conference. 
Uh, then you've got TCU, which can be another local rival just a few hours away in Fort Worth. What does that mean to, to the balance of the Big 12? Do, do you feel like the conference became stronger by adding those two teams? The conference is very strong. Uh, West Virginia, of course, traditionally has been very strong uh, with uh, Bob Huggins. He does a terrific job. And, you know, Trent Johnson at TCU will have that program up and at the Big 12 uh, level in, in very, very soon. So, yeah, the league is, is outstanding. Uh, the addition of those two teams uh, does nothing to take away from that. Uh, it only enhances, especially with, like you said, the tradition of uh, West Virginia and also the uh, Dallas market and uh, the addition of Coach uh, Johnson with uh, TCU. Let's talk a couple of players here real fast. You mentioned Amont um, You know, last year people got to see Romero Osby. You know, we, we saw him – kind of waiting his, uh, his year out. Previously, he looked the part. He looked athletic. He looked strong. Uh, when he got a, finally got on the court last year, he pretty much was what we, what we expected him to be. He's going to be a year older, a year more experienced. Now you've got Amat Embai, again, who looked the part last year for the fans who were able to see him in practice, very athletic. Uh, talk about some of the new guys beginning with Amat and, and what, you're, what they're going to bring to your team this year. Amat's a guy that brings a, a, a good motor, very uh, energetic, a lot of passion, a good leader, very genuine in all of those areas, uh, versatile on the floor, and then he can uh, go outside and and uh, score. He can also make plays off the dribble and very good with a low post or wide post up game. So good activity to the boards and, uh, again, good all-around player that will add a lot to the program. How much are you expecting D.J. Bennett to contribute this year? D.J. is a rangy guy inside, a shot blocker, uh, changes shots on the interior, uh, a little bit you know, ahead defensively uh, relative to his offensive game, but uh, will continue to make progress. Real good worker, good attitude about getting better. When you, when you compare you know, the depth now that you have, you know, last year you basically you had Fitz and you had uh, Romero Osby there um, as your big guys. But now you've got Bennett in there. You've got Amat Embai coming back who, who can give you some more uh, bodies underneath the basket. Um, along with Tyler Neal, does that give you a little more comfort, a, a little more freedom to, to do things with your personnel? No question it does. Uh, the depth will be a, a, a nice uh, area of, of improvement for this team. Uh, last year, uh, uh, not a real deep group. This year, much deeper. Uh, that adds a lot of competition internally for time and minutes, but also, uh, mo- most importantly, the ability to uh, you know, uh, you know keep people fresh and, and, and playing at a higher level during the course of ball games. Last time I talked to you, you couldn't really talk about Isaiah Cousins because he was a commit and not an official player on your team. But uh, as we close out, tell me a little bit about Isaiah Cousins, his game, and how much you're expecting to see him on the court this year. Three perimeter guys uh, in that freshman class are very similar in in that they're long, rangy, athletic, 6'2", 6'3", type uh, players, work extremely hard. Isaiah Cousins, a guy's got really good skill, very, very competitive. He's from a winning program, and and uh, very focused on uh, doing things better as his Buddy Heald and Jalon Hornbeek, uh, the other two guys on the perimeter in that freshman class, and C.J. Cole, uh, perimeter wing from Sperry, Oklahoma, is working really hard and uh, doing a nice job. I, I, can't, I can't close without asking you about Sam Grooms. Uh, amazing speed, does a great job at taking care of the ball, um, really good at passing out assists. Has he improved over the summer in his jump shot? He has worked really hard at it and uh, appears to, to have made a lot of progress. Uh, again, that's one of those things that uh, in, in practice you, you can work at it. And uh, I know Sam's uh, most interested in transferring that uh, results of those efforts uh, to the game. Coach, you, you start practice uh, on the 12th of October. Uh, we're excited to uh, see your team uh, take the court uh, later on. Uh, I guess about four weeks after that. Um, just as we close, the last question, tell us what we can expect to see from the Sooners on the on the floor this year. This is a group that will play really hard. They'll play well together. Uh, I think we'll play much better basketball than we did a year ago in terms of uh, you know moving the ball and space on the floor. I think we'll rebound the ball consistently uh, well. But the big key, the big key for this club to, to really uh, play as well as it can is uh, uh, defensively we have to get stops and be genuinely committed to that and then rebound the ball well on both ends of the floor. You have a uh, you have a track record of uh, of a of a fantastic second year improvement. Um, Oklahoma fans are excited to see what happens this year. Do you feel? I know this is kind of a loaded question, but do you feel you know the week before practice starts that you've got the tools in place to to make a postseason run this year? 
again, really like what this group's done in, in the off season. Uh, like their their uh, level of ability. Uh, I think this group's got a chance to to take big steps with uh, with regard to getting results that they want, and uh, we're excited about it as well. Well, Coach, thanks again for your time. Wishing nothing but the best of luck. Look forward to seeing you at practice, and then more importantly, look forward to seeing you and your your men on the floor uh, starting out early November. All right. Thanks, Matt. Take care, Coach. You bet.